Alright, in this video I'm just going to suggest a couple ways to increase your performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator X. Now in my computer I have a Q9300 2.5 GHz quad core, 3 GHz of uh, memory, RAM, whatever you want to call it, and an EVGA um, 8800 GT, that's 512 MB, and some Sound Blaster card X5, something like that. But Here's uh, here's my settings, which I tend to fiddle with a lot. You notice that the aircraft are on medium high. First off, here's the device, NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GT. My screen resolution is generally on 1440 by 900 times 32, and my target frame rate is around 35. It's pretty much doesn't ever get higher than that. And of course I always use antistropic filtering and anti-aliasing. Now anti-aliasing is a big frame rate killer but it is also a huge performance boost. I use advanced animations because that's really kind of important in the game. Like, you know, wing flex. Um, light bloom, that's pretty unnecessary on the aircraft and that also eats up frames and lens flare eats them up like no other preview direct x10 um i like direct x10 but i do not like having flashy taxiways and runways that's kind of stupid global texture resolution generally always on very high but if i'm recording a video using fraps in the game or, or i'm using a payware aircraft because most of us know that payware aircraft do decrease performance. So if you're doing a video or something, I would bump it down to high. But right now it's at very high. And I'm kind of pushing my computer a little more than I should be with these settings. Aircraft I have on, it says medium high, although there's no difference in the aircraft itself. Because when I switch that on, it goes to ultra high. But the aircraft casts a shadow on itself. Honestly, I think it just looks weird and it eats up frame rates. Aircraft landing lights illuminate the ground. Um, yes, if any of you e ever fly at night, keep that checked. Aircraft cast shadow on the ground. Well, it's not really necessary. It doesn't make a very huge difference. But I like to do it because it kind of looks a little bit cooler. 2D panel transparency. I don't use that ever. It's never above zero. Um, I don't even really use the 2D panel personally. I don't even download a freeware aircraft unless it has a virtual cockpit, so I'm always in the virtual cockpit. Scenery, I have to custom. As you can see, it is a bit higher in some aspects and a bit lower in some aspects than ultra high. Now, if I were to put it on ultra high, that's what it would look like. First off, land detail textures. That's not really even necessary at all. It doesn't do much. Water effects at max. Now water effects destroy frames. And honestly, max 2.x, unless you have like a supercomputer, don't even bother with that. That high 2.x, you don't need that. Mid 2.x, that's what I keep it at. And you're probably thinking, wow, mid, that's probably crappy, but no, it's not actually. It's still good. Now, if you get down to low 2.x or high 1.x, then you're going to see a difference. But there's not much of a difference between max and mid. And I keep it at mid. And that is unchecked. Mesh resolution, that's at 38. I like to bump it up to 19. Just a little bit higher because when you're flying at 30,000 feet or above, it does make a difference. But not when you're at 1,000 feet going 600 miles an hour. Texture resolution... I like to put it at here, but never any higher than that. I mean, if it's at 1, I like to keep it at 60 centimeters at highest. Scenery complexity, I have at very dense. Now, if you put it at extremely dense, you're going to notice a difference. But very dense is already pretty dense. Autogen, that's just generic trees and buildings and stuff and they all look the same so don't even bother with that 
Ground scenery shadows. There's no point. Unless you like to stare at the ground while you're flying. I wouldn't even bother. And it destroys frames. Special effects detail. I keep that at high because I like the custom stuff. It's cool. I keep it at high, but as you can see, if you drop it down to medium, you're going to see a big difference. But this is pretty much how an 8800 GT should look. Now, if you have more of a low-end computer, I would suggest something like medium, 50, that, that, that. That's what most people look like with exceptions like there. But I would just recommend never going past mid. Keep land detail textures off. Keep special effects detail high if you like to look at cool stuff. Weather, this is a pretty big eater of frames. If you if you start getting up here, that's a little bit crazy because you can't really even see 60 miles in the game. But I like to keep it at 70. I used to have it in 80, but now that I have it in 70, it does make a difference. Thermal visualization, that is kind of stupid unless you're a glider you know, pilot, and I rarely ever do them. Detail clouds, they're a necessity. If you use simple clouds, it's like not realistic. Download Winds Aloft data with real world weather. Yes, if you have internet connection, and you probably do if you're watching this video, I would keep that checked because it's realistic and that the weather does change. Rate at which weather changes over time, medium. I don't like to have perfect skies 24-7 because that's just kind of not hard at all. Traffic, zero, 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 and low. Airline traffic and general aviation and any sort of moving object other than your plane destroys frame rates pretty badly. Now, if you had that at 100%, you're just not even going to be able to see the screen unless you have a pretty good setup. Airport vehicle density, I have it low, which is higher than minimum because... I like to see a little bit of kind of cars and stuff at the airport. It's just cool. And, you know, there's really no need for high or anything above that. So I have it at low. And that is pretty much it. Realism settings, they have nothing to do with frame rates. I just keep it at half right now, but I've been thinking about putting it on full. So that's pretty much it. And that is my setup. I plan on upgrading it, but it's pretty good to begin with. Hope this was helpful.